Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to do an update if you have been watching my videos about my daughter and her health and her diagnosis with growth hormone deficiency. So if you haven't seen any of those videos, I will link them in the description below. My daughter's name is Scarlett and she is five and a half years old and she recently got diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency. So um, the previous videos will explain how the testing process was and getting her diagnosis, and this is just an update of what has happened since then. Um, a kind of, kind of a lot of stuff has happened, so um, I just wanted to let you guys know if you're going through something like this, or you know someone that has gone through this, um, what to expect. So after her diagnosis, they wanted her to start on um, growth hormones, and before they can do that, they need to do an MRI of the brain to make sure that there's not a tumor because if a tumor is causing the growth hormone deficiency, then when you start the growth hormones, the tumor is gonna grow. Um, if there is a tumor, it is usually, from everything that I've read, it is usually just a benign mass, um, and it's not a scary kind of tumor that is cancerous. So um, tumors in relation to growth hormone deficiency aren't something to be incredibly scared of. They can just be removed, um, so, and they don't even have to be like, they can be re removed through the, no the nostrils. So that is like pretty easy. It's not like open surgery. But anyways, um, she had her MRI. Since Scarlett is five years old, the MRI of her brain took about an hour long. So since she's five years old, they have to be perfectly still. And she cannot stay perfectly still inside an MRI machine, a big scary MRI machine. So she was sedated, so what we did was she had to be fasting. Um, the part that was not fun was her MRI wasn't until like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was supposed to be at 12.30, but they were super behind, so she didn't have it until about 3 o'clock. So it was kind of hard having her fasting until that long. I had to keep her out of school so that she wouldn't accidentally eat something or someone would give her something to eat, um, but because she had to be sedated, she couldn't eat anything. That's why. So um, she went in, um, they took her blood pressure and everything, they had her in a little hospital bed, and they gave her an oral medication to relax her, and after they gave her that, they took her away. Um, she was super calm by that point, she was just like, she was scared before that I wasn't going to be with her during the test, but ever after they gave her the medication, she did calm down a lot, and I, have, I don't know what it was called. They just told me it was something to relax her and for her not to be scared. And I was like, give it to her. <laughs> so um, I don't know what it was called, but she had that medication. It relaxed her. And then they took her back and they said that they were going to put the mask on her to give her some of the gas medicine to make her sleepy. And once she was falling asleep, they were going to do an IV. And then the rest of the sedation was going to be with the IV. So she was sedated for her MRI. I'm sorry, let me adjust and um, after her MRI was done, it took about an hour and a half because they had to position her correctly inside the machine and they had to start waking her up. So when they called me back, she was still asleep. Um, when she woke up, she was a little confused. She didn't remember anything. So I had to tell her, oh, you're at your MRI. You had your test. You did a great job. So um, she did really good with that. She cried a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying to get like good light. Um, she cried a little bit when she woke up, but then she was fine and literally we left like half an hour later So she was perfectly fine on the way home. She was hungry So she had some pirate booty in the car and then I treated her to Wendy's for being so brave But she had no like lasting effects effects from the sedation once she was awake She was like perfectly fine like she walked out of the hospital herself So um, we got a call two days after her MRI which was surprising to me because I thought it was going to take a lot longer so I'm actually really happy that we got the call. Um, it was actually kind of scary because they called my husband and they're like, oh, well, we'll call you back because me and my husband weren't together. I had been at lunch with my mom. Um, and they were like, oh, we'll call you back because we want to talk to you and your wife together. And I was just freaking out because they, I was like, they had to have found something. So when they did call us back, I'm glad I was there because I had a lot of questions. But they did find something, but it was not a tumor they found the cause for her growth hormone deficiency. So the cause of her growth hormone deficiency is that she has something called ectopic posterior pituitary. So 
the way it was explained to me was when her pituitary gland was developing while I was pregnant, it didn't descend the way it's supposed to. So it is not formed correctly to where it's going to function properly. So because of that, um, the communication between the anterior and the posterior um, pituitary don't communicate well and they don't send adequate signals to produce enough hormones. And sometimes the signals can stop altogether. So because of this, that's why she was growing normally in the first few months of her birth and she was a normal weight when she was born. But over time, the communication of the, of the pituitary gland lessens or gets disrupted or doesn't function correctly because the gland didn't develop correctly. So it causes hormones to not be produced um, the way they're supposed to. So some hormones can be missing. Some hormones can be okay now, but over time they can um, stop being produced or not produced enough. So it's really good that we found out that she has this because we were really only looking at growth hormones. So she is definitely starting her growth hormone injections, um, her treatment. We picked up her pen and the little needles and the medication. So we're just waiting to take the class to learn how to administer her medication. And she'll have a nightly injection probably for the rest of her life because um, even after you're done growing, you do need growth hormones to maintain your muscle mass and your body composition and things like that. And her body's not making much growth hormone at all. So, um, I mean, we'll have to have her tested again when it comes closer to the time. But from what they've told me, she doesn't even have enough growth hormone to maintain an adult body. So um, she's probably going to be on growth hormones for the rest of her life, which is fine. It's just like a minute out of her day that she has to have the shot. But um, she does know about it now. We've explained everything to her. And we have um, opted with after she is brave and gets her shot, she gets a Skittle for being so brave. So <laughs> that is making it a lot easier. Um, we haven't actually started yet, but I'll let you know how it does when it or how she does when it actually starts um, on her treatment. So um, the only thing that we weren't prepared for is because of this pituitary disorder, um, a lot, all of her other hormones could be affected. So she is going in for a blood test to check all of her other hormones. She'll have to have this test repeated every year um, for the rest of her life to make sure that all of her other hormones are being produced in adequate amounts and that they're still being produced. So... Um, like her thyroid and insulin and cortisol, I think it's called. Like every hormone that your pituitary gland, I mean, your pituitary gland is the size of a pea, which I had no idea it was so tiny, but it is so important. So if hers is not functioning correctly, a lot of complications can happen. So if she is missing any of the other hormones, then she'll have to have hormone replacement for those as well. Those are all given orally from a pill or a medication. So I'm happy that she won't have to have like multiple injections. Um, she can just take an oral medication if she's missing any other hormones. So that is what's going on with her diagnosis and what happened after her MRI. Um, she's going to be monitored every three months with um, after she starts her growth hormone treatment. So they'll be monitoring her and doing blood work and checking her growth every three months. We'll be going in for that. And every year she's going to have... Um, testing on all of her hormones to make sure they're at the appropriate levels. And then we also have to have Savannah tested when she's a little bit, we're going to wait until probably like another year when she's four, I think we'll do it. Um, she's going to have to have the MRI with sedation to see if she has the same um, abnormal pituitary gland. Um, it is possible that she could have it too. But um, a lot of times it's presented first with a growth hormone deficiency, but sometimes it's a different hormone that's affected by it. So that's why we need to have her tested because she might not have a growth problem, but she could still have the disorder. So Savannah's going to have to get tested too, which is fine. Um, I'm, I just want to know if she has it or not. If she does have the disorder, they'll just test her hormone levels every year, just like Scarlett. So that's everything that's going on. I appreciate all the prayers and good wishes. Um, our family's doing really great. So we're really happy with um, everything we found out because we just feel like we're full of knowledge and we have a great plan on care for her and we have great insurance. So it's not costing us very much at all for her medication. So we're just feeling very blessed. So I just wanted to share everything with you because I know a lot of you have had her in your hearts and our family in your hearts. So I just want to say thank you so much. Um, 
If you want more updates about her, subscribe. They're probably not going to be as frequent because now we've gone through most of the testing process and are about to start treatment. So I'll probably just do a treatment video in like a month to let you know how the treatment's going. But thank you so much for helping me through this process. Even talking about it is helping me so much. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.